Last semester, we started to talk about the area between curves. We have more to say about that, and we also need to give some kind of real-world problem to convince ourselves that this is not a waste of time. But let me start by briefly reviewing what has come before. So, we have two functions, let's call the upper function f of x and the lower function g of x. So in this introductory example, one of these functions is always bigger than the other. And we are on this interval from A to B. And we want to know the area of the curve. And I'll give you the formula right away, and then we'll talk about it a little. No. No reason to treat it like this is a suspense novel. <coughs> the integral is the upper function, the area, I meant to say, is the upper function minus the lower function in the integral. And where this comes from, this is good review just because it reminds us where integrals in general come from. Suppose we wanted to approximate this area. Um, we've already approximated area under curves, remember, and we got the integral from that. So it's not really surprising that the area between curves should also be an integral. So we cut the axis up just like we did when we were looking at area under curves. In each of these little intervals, we select a point, just like we did when we were looking at area <coughs> under curves. We call that xi star. Again, this is a phrase that's going to become tedious, but just like we did when we were looking at area <coughs> under curves. And we use this point to create a rectangle. And once we've done that with all of these intervals, and we have all of these rectangles, the areas of these rectangles approximate the area that we're looking for. They approximate the area between the curve. If we call the width of that rectangle delta x sub i, then the area of just this rectangle, well, the area of a rectangle is the width times the height. So the width is delta x sub i. The height is f of x sub i star minus not leave myself enough space there, minus g <coughs> of x sub i star. Right? If you want a vertical distance, you take the upper value, and you take the lower value, and you subtract 
them to get that vertical distance. So there's the height, there's the width. We do that with all of these little intervals, and we add all of those areas up. And this is our Riemann sum. And as you start shrinking all of these intervals, our Riemann sum turns into an integral. So this is the formula. We're going to do an example with it, and then we're going to start messing around with it. We're going to ask questions like, so what if there isn't an upper and a lower function? What if they cross? Questions like that. But for now, let's do an introductory example. Let's find that area between, let me use our y equals notation. I don't want to call these maybe f of x and g of x, just because in this previous frame, I used f of x for the upper function and g of x for the lower function. And just looking at these, we don't know which is the upper function and which is the lower function. So maybe this prevents a little confusion. I am big on using technology when it is convenient. So let's take a look at these functions. Let's take a look at x squared and one minus the sine of x. Okay, so what interval are we looking at? That is an excellent question. We need to give that information, and we haven't, so let me finish copying that problem on the interval from 1 to 2. So from 1 to two. This parabola is bigger. I mean, if we wanted to, we could let our x minimum be one and our x maximum be two, so that we're only looking at this interval that we care about. <coughs> and we see, of course, from this uh, from this zoom, it's very hard to tell which of these functions is which, but we see the blue function is greater than the red function, and if I press trace, our calculator, you see, reminds me up here that this blue function is x squared and this red function is one minus the sine of x. If you have an order calculator, like a TI-83, or maybe even like a standard TI-84, you might not be able to see these functions, the names of these functions, I mean. But x squared is bigger, and 1 minus the sine of x is smaller. So this is the upper function. And that is the lower function. 
And this is the interval in question. And at least setting this integral up is now a question of plug and play, the integral of the upper minus the lower function. Uh, actually taking that integral might be easy, it might be difficult, it might be somewhere in between, but in terms of setting it up, The upper function minus the lower function. So be careful with not to make algebraic mistakes. That's where a lot of grief in calculus comes from. So we've got minus one but then we've got minus, minus the sign, <coughs> two minuses cancel. So there is at least the integral. If we want to find this area, we're going to need to compute that integral. Um, fortunately, each of these pieces <coughs> is pretty straightforward. There's no u substitution or anything like that. The antiderivative of x squared is one third x cubed. So this is the antiderivative of that. <clears throat> the antiderivative of one is x, and the antiderivative of the sine is the negative cosine. And I always find uh, these problems sort of end pretty tediously. So now we have to actually plug this one and this two in. Uh, two cubed is eight. Eight thirds minus two minus the cosine of two minus. When we plug one in, one third minus one minus the cosine of one. And that ends up being, oh, whatever it is. Let's see. Make sure, by the way, we still should be if you haven't been using your calculator for other stuff but we need to be in radians here. So let me see, it was eight thirds. What are you doing, Zoom? Eight thirds minus two minus the cosine of two. Oh, minus. I believe one third minus one minus the cosine of one. One third minus one minus the cosine of one. And rounding to three decimal places, which I somewhat arbitrarily chose on our homework. 2.290. This, uh, this 7 turns this 9 to a 0, turns this 8 to a 9. <clears throat> so, 
So that's, I won't say simple, because antiderivatives aren't simple until you've uh, really got a lot of practice, but at least straightforward in the sense that we have all of the things here. We had an upper function, we had a lower function, we were given our limits of integration, the antiderivative didn't require you substitution, didn't require any clever tricks. So it was mainly just plug and play and trying not to make any little mistakes that will throw your answer off. Let's look at a, at a variation on this. Let's find the area. I always like to use this, let's do, use this word trapped, but find the area trapped between, and now we can't, we can't refuse to use function notation forever. Let's call one of these F and one of these G. So, just looking at this thing, um, these functions are the same functions that I used in the previous example. I don't have an interval written on the board, though. Whereas in the last example, I had written down some interval that we want to look at. Here, we have nothing like that. And when you have a problem that like this, an area between curves problem, and you're not given any kind of interval, what that indicates to you is that these curves are trapping some kind of region between in them. And we're asked for the area. That's why I like to use the word trapped. I don't think it's in your textbook. But, and when we ask for the area, we're asking for the area of this enclosed region. So let's take another look at x squared and one minus the sine of x. Let's default our zoom. Let's go back there. This region here, we can see, is trapped between these two curves. So that's the area, or this is the region whose area we want. And let's, uh, let's zoom in on this a little. I... Okay, so this area reading left to right, this is the area we're interested in. It might, it might be slightly... Just because if I do this, um, I, I'm trying to, I'm Desmos.com is an online graphing utility. We used it uh, in the last semester. Let's look, I'm just, tr as, as like pedagogically, I'm trying to show this region. So it should be, 
x squared is less than y is less than 1 minus the sine of x. Here we go. Here's x squared. Here's 1 minus the sine of x. And this area trapped between them, which I can now shade thanks to Desmos, is the area that we're looking for. Is this being shared for online students? It is now. So we need limits of integration, and those are going to be the leftmost um, point of this region and the rightmost point of this region. And the leftmost point of this region is here. And the rightmost point of this region is here. And notice that the leftmost point and the rightmost point are points of intersection. They're the points where these curves cross. So to find the point of intersection, if it's where these curves cross, now, algebraically, this is where these curves are equal to each other. But uh, going back to what I said earlier about using technology, if you know how to solve x squared equals 1 minus sine of x, then you know more than I do. I would find these points of intersection graphically. So Desmos just kind of does it. If you click kind of near the point of intersection, it will intuit that that's what you are interested in. And then you can click these points on your calculator it's slightly more of a more of a thing but you go to the calculate menu up here and you scroll down to intersect now here's one of our curves here's the other curve uh, notice it's asking for a guess. I mean, there are two points of intersection, so we have to tell it we're looking for a point of intersection near here. And we press enter, and we get negative 1.409. I've, I've just been keeping three decimal places that say that's 1.410. So we've got these curves. And that leftmost point of intersection is 1.410. The rightmost point of intersection, just quickly repeating this. First curve, second curve. We're interested in the point around here. 0 0.637. Wait. I must have... I probably just... Yeah, I lost that negative sign, negative 1.4 something. And 
And now that we have this interval, we just need the upper and the lower functions, and we can use this formula. So, uh, this lower function is the parabola x squared. This upper function is 1 minus the sine of x. So the typing this into our calculator at, in the last step where these ugly limits of integration are going to be a little bit of a hassle. But other than that, the antiderivative <coughs> of 1 is x. The antiderivative of the negative sign is the positive cosine. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sign. The antiderivative of x squared is one-third x cubed, and we have these lamentable limits of integration, 0 0.637, and uh, negative 1.3. And now the next step is clear. It's do I have like I do. Let me just quickly chop this down so I don't spend five minutes clicking between the whiteboard and my calculator. Okay, new share, calculator. Press the right buttons, point six three seven, plus the cosine of point six three seven minus one third times point six three seven. Oh, minus negative one point four one plus the cosine of negative one point four one minus one third times negative 1.41 cubed. This is uh, even more than taking ugly integrals. What we are seeing here is my least favorite part of calculus 2. If we have entered all of this correctly, we can press enter and get 1.670.
Okay. So this area stuff is going to take more than a day. That's fine. Let's have you do a problem. This compared to the problems you did yesterday might take a while. But why don't you try to find the area between f of x equals x squared. So we're keeping the x squared, but that's for your first problem. Let's simplify that other function. x squared and the sine of x. And let me let me go to Desmos and double check that this is a nice enclosed area. Yeah, right here. These curves are enclosing a region, and that is what you are looking for. That's where is this? Taking a look at this. So the lower curve is this parabola, x squared. The upper curve is the sine of x. So it's going to be the sine of x minus x squared. One of our limits of <coughs> integration is nice. I mean, once again, this region begins with a point of intersection, ends with a point of intersection. Zero is a nice value. 0.8767 is less nice. <clears throat> but aside from making the last step where we plug stuff into our calculator a little messier than it might need to be. Um, we can, well, we can plug this into our calculator. Let me once again scratch down this problem in my notes so that I'm not constantly swapping back and forth between the screen and the calculator. Um, negative the cosine of 0.8767 minus one-third times point eight seven six seven cubed cubed. Let's try that again. So we plugged in our upper limit. We can if we want, do the lower limit in our head. The cosine of zero is one, so negative one. One third zero cubed is zero. Yep, point one three six.
let's at least... Well, first of all, <coughs> does anybody have any questions about anything that's come so far today? That's at least, I don't know how much time we have or how far, I mean, I know how much time we have. I don't know how far we'll get in that time. But let's at least introduce a complication. Let's find the area <coughs> between f of x equals x cubed, and I seem to really, really love this sine function, x cubed and the sine of x. So, we're not being given limits of integration which should mean that these curves are enclosing some region, and we want the area of that enclosed region. So let's turn x squared into x cubed, and let's see what we get. And what we get is that these curves are enclosing not one, but two different regions. So there's a region down here. Let me see if I can make Desmos show this to me, I mean, shade this region in. There we go. So there's this region here that's enclosed by these curves, but there's also a region up here that's enclosed by these curves. Again, let me see if I can make Desmos show this to me. So the region enclosed <coughs> by these curves is in two pieces, um, which is not an inherent problem, the real complication here is that the upper and the lower function is different in each of these pieces, right? If we look at this region here, then x cubed is the upper function. And the sine of x is the lower function. If we look at this region here, the sine of x is the upper function, and x cubed is the lower function. So the way we're going to handle this, we're not going to be able to actually finish this problem today, but we're going to break it into pieces, right? So this region we're looking for has two different parts, this part here, this part here. We can find the area of this region. It's the upper function minus the lower function integrated from the left-hand uh, extrema to the right-hand boundary. We know how to find the area of this region. And we know how to find the area of this region, too. Once again, 
it's the upper function minus the lower function integrated from the left boundary to the right boundary. So, and again, the reason we have to do this in these pieces share screen sharing is paused what resume share to use this formula We need to have an upper curve and a lower curve. And again, to summarize the issue here, let me, is that the upper curve and the lower curve change. So we can't write down one formula. We've got for this region, the upper curve is x cubed and the lower curve is the sine. But then for this region, the upper curve is the sine and the lower curve is the x cubed. So those integrals are different. The antiderivatives are different. They have to be dealt with separately. And we will finish this problem up tomorrow and then continue with area. There is more stuff for us to look at. And I will see you then, remember, at 8 a.m. tomorrow.